All right, let's get to the fun here. Uh, this is a man that really needs no introduction in this house. Okay. He's our bishop, Bishop Jeffrey Larson. Let me tell you a little bit about Bishop. The Bish, okay? Uh, he, uh, he and his lovely wife and his kids are here. Kids, raise your hand. There's one of them right there. Uh, I mean, these, are, these are people of the Lord that, that loaded a tour bus for years and just went throughout the country just preaching and proclaiming the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, this is a family and a man that's got an anointing on his life, and I'm honored to call him one of my best friends and my, actually also my business partner. So give, give it up for the lovely Bishop Jeffrey Larson. Open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. Just take a minute and just pray in the Holy Ghost. Kora bama Sunday, Kora bama mama Sunday, Kori da 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 basando, Ishe de 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 be kende de de be sindo, Kori da da basando, Le tana na mama Sunday, Kora da da, E baba masata, E baba mama sando, Kori da da baba mama Sunday, I baba mama so Kori baba baba Sunday, Isha mama mama sando, Kora da da baba Sunday, Ha baba mama sando lo kodo 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 baba baba Sunday he. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Father, we glorify you tonight. We magnify you tonight. Lord, there is none other to praise except you. Lord, your name is worthy above all else, oh God. Glory, glory, glory. Let your glory be manifested in this place tonight, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. Father God, we glorify you. Oh, there's a crazy anointing in this place. I, 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 listen, I didn't get to be here this weekend. We, we're on a Blood Brothers trip. A bunch of my ministry brothers are out here and stuff. We're, we're, we're stuck out in the mountains of Arkansas and stuff. It, we're suffering for Jesus. It's okay. You know what I'm saying? But, but listen, the Lord had me do something, and I'll just say outright, the Lord had me do something, and I asked Pastor Al, and so he did the do. Okay? Now, while Josh was here, I mean, he were here this weekend, Josh was here? The guy's anointed, didn't he? Okay, yeah, well, see this little hanky I got right here? This is a little hanky he had in his pocket when he preached. That got laid, that got laid on some people, right? So we're just going to carry on the same anointing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 
I'll tell you what. Um, I, I, I like to tell stories, and so I'm, I'm maybe not the same kind of preacher as what, you, you, what you're used to, but I love to tell stories because I think that they build faith. There was a guy that we used to travel with named Harold Wallace, and probably nobody in this room knows, knows Harold. He's retired now, but he traveled on the road. Yeah, a few people do. He traveled on the road for, gee whiz, I don't know, 40 years, somewhere in there, and he just told stories. They called him Harold's Parables. And the guy just, I mean, he would tell a story, and the guy knew everybody. He's the guy in the joke that if you looked up at the Vatican, they said, hey, who's that guy with Harold? And there was a pope. You know what I mean? That's the guy. The guy knows everybody, absolutely everybody. But, uh, you know, he'd walk into a place, and he'd begin to minister, and he'd look over at somebody and say, oh, by the way, I've never met you before, but listen, God says you're going through an issue right now, and I'll give you an example, an extra example. He walks in, there's a guy named Ace, Phil A. Strike. His name's Ace. He says, Ace, God just spoke to me, said you were having problems with the bank on your land, and it was there that someone was trying to steal it. Well, God said to tell you, Ace, that you're supposed to uh, get $10,000 from a man that's, uh, and, and he gave the guy's name, I won't mention it, uh, fairly well-known radio guy. He says, he says, you're supposed to get $10,000 from this guy and go and file Chapter 11 bankruptcy because you need to get attention to what the bankers are trying to do because they're trying to steal your land never having met the guy in his life, he says this to him, okay? And he says, well, that's fascinating because, yes, I'm going through that. Yep, the, the word is accurate, but I don't know that guy. And about that time, that guy walks in the door. That, and, and so they, they, it, was, it, was a, it was a full gospel businessman's breakfast. And so he walks over and introduces himself, and he says, hi, my name is Phil A. Strike, and, and I just had a word given to me that I was supposed to come up to you, and I'm supposed to ask you for $10,000, and here's what I need it for. And the guy says, man, that is crazy. He said, look at this. He said, I haven't worn this sport coat in almost a year. And uh, almost a year ago, I sold an antique rifle. And I forgot to cash the check. It's for $10,000. Here, let me sign that over to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm going, send me some of that, not the money. I want the anointing. I want the anointing. I want the anointing. I want the prophetic anointing. So we got to follow this guy around a little bit, and this guy just spoke into our lives. And we traveled with him, and, and uh, the Lord opened doors, and, and it was just absolutely amazing, amazing things. And, and we've been able to... Uh, uh, to, to run into a, a, a people or a person or two along the way that I would call a prophet. Now, tonight we're going to talk about prophecy. We're going to talk about the ministry of prophecy and how it affects us and how we get involved, and then we're going to get involved. Does that make sense? Hallelujah. Well, I'll tell you, I, you know, I, I love the stories. I, I love the stories. Uh, prophecy, what is prophecy itself? Prophecy is God speaking through people. Amen. That's it, right? It, it, it kind of makes sense. In, uh, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says there that man was created in the image of God. Now, why do you suppose he did that? Just to have a play toy? Man's created in God's image so that he can communicate with him. He wants fellowship with him. This is not like I have a pet rock or a pet turtle. This is somebody I can fellowship. That's the way he looks at man. So he creates man so that he can have communication with him. He creates man as he is now an eternal being with a spirit, right? Yes. With a soul, your mind, your will, your intellect, and your emotions, and then this beautiful bag of bones that we wear for a short period of time, right? Uh, some got better looking ones than other. I'm sorry, it's not my issue. We're all beautiful, right? I love people. I love looking at people. I like tall people, short people, fat people, skinny people. I love people. It's absolutely amazing to me that every one of us being made in the image of God can take on his character regardless of where we are in our life, regardless of how we, were, how we looked when we were born. You know what I'm saying? Right? We can take on the character of God, and one of those things is to take his nature and to take his word and to bring his word through us and out into the church or out into the body, right? Well, listen, first of all, as children of God, we have privilege of hearing God's voice all the time, right? All right. His sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. That's John 10, verse 3, right? His sheep hear his voice. Those that are called by his name, 
right? Called according to his purpose. These guys, the qualified, you know, in the end of the book, it talks about overcomers, right? Talk about overcomers. If you overcome, you get what? A white robe. If you over overcomer, you get the power to, to have eternal life. If you're an overcomer, right, you get a new name. If you're an overcomer, he gives you a white stone with your new name on. You know what I'm saying? Over and over and over, it's the overcomers and stuff. Part of that being a child of God is that we should hear his voice and know his voice. It's the same voice that called us when we when we got saved. Right? Man, I mean, look, he wooed us. He called us. He romanced us. Man, it, it, like me, I'll, I'll tell a story about my mom. My mother over here is the happiest person on the planet. Sometimes when we were growing up, that got a little irritating. I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Her name is Joyce. You could just shorten it to Joy because that is her life, okay? <laughs> So, you know, I'm praying, Mama, I'm off wandering, doing all the stuff that stupid people do. They call those prodigals. And, uh, and, and one night I call, I call my mother, and usually I'd call, and she'd say, oh, hi, how you doing? And, you know, that's how she acts. And she's all happy and everything. And, and, and uh, so I call one night, and she said, hello. And I said, I'm ready. She said, great, let's pray. That was it. There was no ready for what. It was let's pray. And, and, and so, so we give it... <laughs> So I go through this thing. I'm giving my life to the Lord, right? I got saved when I was 10. I asked Jesus in my heart, but that was because I was at a camp and the counselor was talking about hell and I'm pretty sure I didn't want to go there. So I asked Jesus in my heart. And, well, actually I waited about four hours until it was dark and the campfire had gone down and I was in my tent alone. I was pretty sure the demons were at the door and they were trying to get into the tent. I went and found a camp counselor and said, I need to get saved because I do not want to go to hell. So I got saved, but I still went and slept inside a car because I was pretty sure they couldn't come through glass. Okay? So I grow up, I, a wonderful Christian home. I know all the stuff there is to know, you know, all the buzzwords and everything else. But I'm telling you what, when I went out on my own, I got lost as a goose in a, in, in a snowstorm. And, oh, I'm telling you what, did everything there was under the sun. But one night I called my mom and I just said, I'm ready. She said, great, let's pray. And so we began to pray, and man, we're quoting scriptures, and we're off in it, and we're just, oh, God, restore my life, and do this, and do this, and do this, and do this, and do this. And I had this shopping list about a mile and a half long. Oh, it was a great shopping list, too. I'd thought this out, too, because I knew if I had God's ear, because I'm repenting, right? I'm repenting. I'm, I'm, I'm coming back. I'm coming back in the fold. I'm giving him my life. Therefore, he's got to be listening to me. Yeah. If he's listening to me, I got a shopping list. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's got to listen to that prayer, right? Okay, so I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm all there. And uh, so I'm, I'm all tickled. And about midnight, we got off the phone. We've been on the phone for about 30 minutes. She said, well, I'm going to sleep. And I say, okay, I'm going to go, and I'm going to turn on this radio. See, I was going through a divorce is what the deal was. And I wouldn't go sleep back in my back bedroom because it was what I would call lonely back there. So I had this little cot, little pallet made out in the living room. And mom had given me a, a little clock radio and uh, uh, some, some sheets and blankets and stuff and a Bible that had been given to me when I graduated from high school. What am I going to do with that? So I'm going through this Bible because it's the only book I have and I don't have a TV and anything else. And I didn't, I'm reading everything. I'm reading here, you know, like and David and Goliath and he's killing Philistines and go kill them all. And, and all I get is he loves me, he loves me, he loves me, he loves me, he loves me. That's all I got was that he loved me. Okay? So there's a point to what I'm saying here. So I get off the phone and I say, listen, you go to bed. I'm going to turn on my radio because there's this crazy guy on the radio program called praise in the night this guy named steve solomon okay and i don't know what it is but i started listening to this music and it just makes me it makes me feel good i just it's like worship something i don't know what it means but you know because i hadn't even said the prayer yet you know what i'm saying i mean i hadn't even prayed yet and i'd been listening to this for about a week reading my bible and just found out that he loved me all over the place and so i turn on the radio after hanging up from others just a couple minutes after 12 Turn on the radio, and Pastor Steve is preaching out of 1 Corinthians chapter 13. All this, and if I don't have love, I've got nothing, right? And he says, wait, young man just turned on the radio. He just gave his life to the Lord. But let me tell you something, son. 
Your life isn't restored when your wife shows up on the front doorstep with all the stuff. You can quote all the scriptures that you want. In fact, you're just quoting out of the book of Mark, and you said, if I say to this mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. And you're quoting all the scriptures, all the right words and stuff, and you're doing all the right things, but let me tell you something, son. God doesn't take shopping lists. He has a covenant that he put in place, and it's not up for renegotiation. The covenant stands. Either you accept it, you take part, or you don't. And this is the God's honest truth. He said, if you're ready to quit screwing around with God, why don't you give me a call? Now, I'm in my quiet little living room. I'm looking at the radio. I am terrified. I'm praying again, God, let whoever he's talking about call <laughs> so that I'm off the hook because this is scaring the living daylights out of me because I just realized not only did God hear me when I prayed, but he cared enough of my heart and it was ill-placed in my prayers. He cared enough about me to let some guy in a nationally syndicated radio talk show tell all of North America what I was doing so that he'd get my attention to let me get right with him. That is a terrible day because I am looking at this radio for like 20 minutes. How dumb can you get and still breathe? I know you're asking, okay? I'm looking at this radio. I'm, I'm mortified. Uh, 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 <clears throat> Nobody called him. I couldn't believe it. So, so then, then just before my insides actually exploded, you know what I'm talking about when God speaks to you and you hear it right here in, the, in, your, in your belly, that same place that John says that out of your belly will flow rivers of living, li rivers of living water, right? That same place, I'm tied up in knots. I'm dying here. So I dial the number. 787-1917 for those of you that ever called KVTT. That's the right number. I, I, I call and a lady named Rose answers the phone. Look, we're talking 20, uh, almost 22 years, no, 23 years ago. I know, I know the number. You know what I'm saying? It scared me. So I dialed the number. This lady named Rose answers and, and she says, praise the night, can I help you? I said, it's me, it's me, it's me. And she says, sir, I have no idea what you're talking about. I said, I'm the guy. I'm the guy. He was, he was talking, and then he said, the guy, and, and, and she said, do you want to go on the air? I said, I don't care. So all of a sudden, my radio's squealing, and everything's, he's like, turn down your radio. So I was feeding back. I'm on live all over North America. And he tells me what an idiot I am. He says, he says I'm glad you're praying. Oi, no, I'm glad you're praying, but you're praying wrong. God isn't interested in your little list. God wants you, 100% you, and nothing else. There's nothing you can give him that's above and beyond that. And there's nothing he's interested in giving you except all of him. So, for the second time in about 20 minutes and the third time in my life, I got saved. <laughs> but that's the gift of prophecy at work. You see, God puts something into his heart. Now, we, I, I told you that, that his sheep hear his voice, right? They know him. We hear him speak. Uh, you know, I'd love to have a show of hands. You don't have to, but how many people hear God talk to you every single day? I do. I do. It's amazing because he tells me some of the coolest stuff. But we got to learn to listen to it. And so, so the, the, you know, we operate in prophecy if we're hearing from God because we, we self-prophesy. We prophesy over ourselves. We hear him speak to us all the time. Amen. That's a form of prophecy when we recognize it because we then take those words and we speak that over ourselves, right? Hallelujah. All right. Now, where's this big leap come in to get into this five-fold ministry club? You know, you know the club I'm talking about, the apostles, the prophets, you know, the, the teachers, the evangelists, you know, the pastors, those guys. You know what I'm saying? That's an elite club, right? No. It's, no. We, we're all there. We're, we're all supposed to operate in it. We might not have the office. Look, I don't even have a business card with the word prophet on it. 
that's a joke. That's a joke. It's, as, as Pastor C would say, it's kind of cold in this Presbyterian church right about now. But you know the kind. You ever been on the street and some guy walks up and hands you his business card and says, Prophet so-and-so? Or Prophet is so-and-so? But that's amazing because I did, look, I didn't even know God made those cards for people. You know what I'm saying? I'm just walking through life. I'm just, I'm just going. I'm just trusting him. I don't even have the business card. But I have this. That's a Bible thumping Bible right there. That's all I'm saying to that. That thing weighs about eight pounds. Praise God. See, because if they don't get saved, we just knock them out anyways. They think they're slain in the spirit. But same as the word of God had effect on their life. You just thump them with it. No, it's, man, I'm telling you what, God wants to communicate with us in such a magnificent way, there's no question that it's him. This is how he wants to, how he wants to talk to us. We have a friend, I won't go into the whole deal, but this guy, dude, he not only has the office of prophet, he puts his feet on the desk and God doesn't mind. You know what I'm saying? This guy, this guy hears from the Lord. And so we've had opportunities, kind of like Harold, we, we've had opportunity to sit with him I've literally watched him, and I won't go into details. I've watched him be on the cell phone talking to something, uh, somebody in a very, very important matter, and the cell phone's dying, and he's trying to plug it in, and he can't plug it in. So he just took the battery off the stupid cell phone and continued to talk for another 45 minutes with no battery and no electricity on the cell phone. Because God wanted him to relay the prophetic message somewhere. I thought, I want some of that. I, I want some of that. So, so Angela and I are visiting uh, this 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 guy who's like I said, he puts his feet up on the on the on the desk in the chair or in the office of the prophet. And I said, "How do you hear God?" Because I'm waiting. I mean, listen, I'm waiting for this big theological exposition or whatever. I don't even know how to say it. You know what I'm saying? But I'm looking for this great big thing. I'm looking for this long explanation of how God speaks. After many days of fasting and prayer and cleansing, go into your quiet place and meditate. Think of the name of the Lord. And this bright light will come at the far side of the room. Or not. But if it does, in neon letters, it'll be whatever message the Lord is trying to send to you. Right? Okay, maybe not. So I said, okay, um... How do you hear from God? He says, well, it's the coolest thing. He said, like, the Bible says to take your thoughts captive. Yeah. Okay. Hey, I'm pretty good at that. Lust what? <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Walking down the street and someone walking at you and you didn't actually notice they had a head. I'm, look, <laughs> it's the truth. We're wired like that sometimes. And so you look and you, oh my goodness sakes, and you got to take that captive. And you used to say, Lord, I just subject this to you because that's not godly on my part, Father. Lord, I just thank you. But you know, taking your thoughts captive isn't just the bad stuff captive. It's the good stuff too, because God can put a thought inside of you that you didn't even realize was from him because you didn't pay attention to it. So I said, how do you hear from God? And he says, well, he says, it's really rather simple. Take your thoughts captive. Okay. I can do that. What do you mean? <laughs> I committed before I understood it. He says, every thought that I have, if it's out of the ordinary, I mean, if I'm driving thinking I got to turn left up here, I don't say, God, is that you? You know, I checked the directions before I went or my GPS said, turn left. I'm not going to, I'm not going to, Lord, show me three signs that that GPS is right. And I need to turn at, at the next block. Please, Lord, give me some signs. And they may not come. You know what I'm saying? But say you're walking along, I'll give you an example from this guy. This guy's sitting there, and he'll just be doing something, reading the word, being super spiritual. He might be, you know, he's, he's crippled in a wheelchair, so he might be crawling to the bathroom, literally, because he doesn't want to get up in his wheelchair. So he's dragging himself to the bathroom, and he'll see a hamburger up on stilts. Literally, just in his mind, he'll just see a hamburger. Okay. I'm thinking, dude, that guy ate too much pizza. You know what I'm saying? But he'll say, Lord, what are you trying to show me? And all of a sudden, that picture, he'll stop and he'll look at that picture and it'll change into something else. And then he'll see a person or something 
And then all of a sudden, because he stopped to think of that crazy hamburger, or I think of a donut. There was a donut on three toothpicks, and it burst into flames. I'm, really? This is a bad acid drip. A donut, it's, it's on three toothpicks and burst into flames, but he stopped and he said, Lord, what are you trying to say? And all of a sudden, he saw a whole situation happening around the Seattle Space Needle, which looks like a donut on three toothpicks. Okay? Listen, guys, God wants to talk to us. You know, the, the, the word says that uh, man shall not live by bread alone. Right? Isn't that right? Matthew 4.4? 4. But he says, not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Okay? The word here proceedeth. <laughs> it's King James. Is a verb infinitive. You know what that means? I had to go back and think about what my English teacher taught me when I wasn't listening. It means it's a verb that always is active. So, wait a minute. If I have the written word of God here, and then he's telling me that word proceedeth, is proceeding, continues to proceed, continues to come out of the mouth of God. Uh oh. Where am I going to get that from? Because I've got the written word here, and it says that not one jot or tittle be changed, right? It also says in here that we're not supposed to add anything to it or take anything from it, right? Then what about this word that continually proceeds out of the mouth of God? Where do I get this from? He's speaking it. He's saying it every day to us. Every day day he's speaking to us and and we're and yeah, we're running around we're, we're we're busy we don't always hear it but he's giving us a little clue right here in in revelation 19 forgive me i didn't put this this uh, scripture on the list there i only entered i think i don't know like a hundred or something um but uh you know in in revelation it uh, it says that the that the testimony of christ is the spirit of prophecy let me explain something to you. We can have a show of hands. How many people have ever prophesied in their life? A few people. But you know what? I venture to say that those that didn't get to raise their hands just now have prophesied and didn't even know it. You know why? The, the testimony of Christ. Every time I get up and I say, he saved me. Am I in heaven yet? Am Am I? No, I'm not in heaven yet. He renewed my mind by the washing of the water of the word. Is it completely renewed? No, but, but I'm speaking it, aren't I? I'm speaking about things that are not as though they were. I just prophesied. I just said he changed me. He bought me. He renewed me. He gave me eternal life. All of these things. He's healed me. He delivered me. Everything I'm going through, all these confessions of what Jesus has done for me at his work at the cross and the stripes that he suffered, all of those things, every time, yeah, every time I let these things come out of my little big mouth here, I'm prophesying. Hallelujah. You want to know how to prophesy? Talk about what Jesus did for you. Every word, every word, every time we talk about Christ's redemption, we talk about how his, his blood, all of those things, we are prophesying. Now, we're prophesying most of the time to ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Great. In, in, in Paul's letters to us, he's great. I love him. I wish, you know, let, I speak in tongues more than all of you guys do. That's what he said, Right? I, I wish y'all did, but I'd rather have five intelligible words because he says that that uh, when you're speaking in tongues, your mind is not edified, right? Your soul is not edified. Your, your, your spirit is, is edified, but your mind, your will, your intellect, your emotions, they don't get it. I love Pastor Steve. Very first time I ever heard him preach, I cracked up 
because he's in the middle of it. Shaka rababa Sunday, mama Sunday. Don't worry, I'm not talking to you. And I laughed and I thought, oh my gosh, that is brilliant. That is brilliant because he's, he's, it's an interactive message. He's in the midst of, of, of talking and, and teaching us, and he stops to get a download from the Holy Ghost. And see, and then he goes, yes, Lord. Yes, okay, great. You know, that's because him there. But see, what he got there that most of us didn't see him get was he gets the interpretation to come along with that. Oh, we get all hung up in church. You must interpret the tongues. You can't have any tongues if you don't bring the interpretation. You must have one guy stand here and the other guy stand over here. And this guy goes, shuck him a Hyundai. And this guy over here says, thus saith the Lord. You know what I'm saying? Cora Basande Mama Masando Cora. Don't worry about it. I'm not talking to you. I love it. Cora Baba Basande Mama Masando Cora. Da 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 Baba Sanda La Basha. I'm inviting the Holy Spirit to talk right back to me. He wants to have discourse with me. He wants to speak into my life, so I'm going to speak into his. Because when I pray in the Spirit, that's who talking through me. It's him. It's the Holy Spirit talking through me. Through my spirit comes out of my mouth. He gets it. I'm talking his love language. <clears throat> Come on, somebody. So we're driving down the road one time. Um, as pastor, I got to say, we got to get in a tour bus for just shy of about four years, leased out our house, and just went out to preach, pray, and prophesy wherever the Lord would let us go. Now, there are some of you, most of you have never heard my wife sing unless you have one of our CDs. The, the girl can sing. I, listen, I'm an excellent bus driver. That's where we went. Wherever they let her sing, I drove. But we got opportunity to preach, pray, and prophesy along the way. I remember one time we were heading from, from Texas, and uh, the Lord had spoken to us, and again, just listening, just listening. He put in my spirit. He said, I want you to go to Virginia Beach. So we talked about said, hey, God said to go to Virginia Beach. We're getting used to hearing his voice. She's in agreement. We take off. We're heading to Virginia Beach. So we're driving down the road, and I remember we're just outside of Atlanta, Georgia, and I heard myself say, you ever hear yourself say? I heard myself say to her, hey, you know, while we're out here, we're going to be in the 700 Club. She says, yeah, right. It's the truth. You know, I heard myself say I'm an extrovert. I have to say it to think it. You introverts don't get it. You have to think about something to say. You'll think about something for three days before it comes out of your mouth. I'm an extrovert. If I don't express the thought I just had, I will explode in the next few minutes. I will pace around like this and be a nervous wreck because I have to get out of my mouth. And it doesn't matter if I'm the only one around. It doesn't matter. I have to say it. I'm in the middle of the dark, and I'm sitting there going, i got to mow the lawn tomorrow. Oh. You see, if I didn't say it, if I didn't get it out of my mouth, I, I would, that would be stuck in here and it would rattle around like that little marble in a steel cage or a maze and it would roll around and roll around and I would get no sleep because I'd be absolutely obsessed with the fact that I have to mow the lawn tomorrow. But if I say it, if I get it out of my spirit, oh, and so... We're driving down the road. I hear myself say, hey, we're going to be on the 700 Club. Okay. So we don't even have a church to go to in Virginia Beach. So we drive to Virginia Beach. We park in an RV park, a great big RV park with like 1,600 camper spots. We pull the bus in. She says, where are we going now? I said, I don't know, but let's, let's think. And I remembered Harold Wallace, my buddy. I do, I mean, do this guy hears from God. So we call him up. He says, Harold. He says, oh, I was just thinking about you. <laughs> sure. And uh, he said, what are you doing? I says, we're in Virginia Beach. He says, you are? What are you doing there? And I said, well, I don't know. We came to Virginia Beach because God said to come to Virginia Beach. He said, man, that is so cool. He said, look, there's this little church south of Virginia Beach. What part are you on? I said, we're right by the boardwalk. We're on the south side of Virginia Beach. And he said, well, just a few miles down the road from here, a little town called Pungo, Virginia. They're known for their strawberry festival, by the way, if you ever want to go. <clears throat> Pungo, Virginia, a little 104-year-old four-square Pentecostal church. So um, 
He says, I know the pastor over there, a guy named Jerry Hanna. He says, why don't you give him a call and uh, tell him I sent you, and he'll let you preach and, and sing and do your thing. Because we, we'd get up and we'd lead, we'd lead worship, and we'd sing, and then I'd share whatever message the Lord gave me, and, and we'd pray for people and watch them fall down and go boom, stuff like that. And uh, yeah, these really cool things would happen. God just shows up. So anyways... I said, great. He gives me Jerry's number. I call Pastor Hannah. And I said, Pastor Hannah, my name is Reverend <clears throat> Jeffrey Larson. And uh, my wife, Angela, and I have a music ministry and a preaching ministry. And, uh, and I'm giving him the whole, you know, the whole deal. And he's like, yeah, what? Um, hello? No, I'm good. I says, uh, Harold, wa- oh, Harold sent you. Oh, when would you like to come? I said, well, we're, uh, this is a Thursday, by the way. I said, we're parked in Virginia Beach now. He said, how's Sunday? Yeah. Great, we'll be there Sunday morning. So he gives me directions to the church. He says, listen, I'm down in South Carolina right now. I won't be there until right before the service and stuff, so I won't be able to meet you ahead of time, but you're friends of Harold, so you guys just come and share as you see as you see fit, okay? So we go to this church, and it's about as big as the center section right here, and, and we're up here, and, and we start praise and worship, and they're all looking at us. I mean, dude, this is a country church. I mean, the newest set of coveralls in there were several years old. <laughs> this, this is a, this is a, this is a, you, you ever hear the Larry Norman song, country church, country people with their eyes upon the Lord? It was written about that one. <laughs> These, that's no joke. These, I mean, dude, they're overalls. Some people had the jeans on stuff, but rip. These are precious, precious farmers and stuff out there. They may live in one of the most beautiful places on the planet, but they're hardworking farmers. And so we go in there, and I've got about a nine-inch ponytail hanging off the back. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, hey, how you doing, huh? And they're like, what is this guy doing here? So anyways, um, we finish worship, and it's a great time, and the anointing's crazy in this place. And so I get up to preach, and I'm all fired up, and, man, I'm doing one of my three sermons that I know, and I, boy, I'm laying it out there and stuff. I'm, I'm preaching, and there's this dude sitting about halfway back over here, and this guy is in a $3,000 or $4,000 suit, if there ever was one. You know what I'm saying? This guy is dressed to the, the, to the nines. This, I mean, dude, silk shirt, fine tie, gorgeous fabric. I, I just want to walk up and rub my hands on it. You know what I'm saying? It's just snuggle on it. See, it was like a little snuggle teddy bear or something. Yeah. This guy, this guy's a good looking dude sticking out like a sore thumb back there. So I'm up here preaching. I'm, oh, yes, and God said, and oh, I'm all spiritual and into this thing. And God begins to give me a download about this man. And he says, I want you to prophesy over that man right now in church. Not now, God, I'm preaching. (laughs) He has ways of fixing that stuff, you know what I'm saying? So, man, I'm trying to go to the next point. I can't find it. I don't even, I got my Bible open. There's like no words on the page, you know what I'm saying? It's like someone someone gave me this blank page. It's kind of like that book, Everything I Know About Women. It's just completely blank. There's 8,000 pages there and a single word on it. But I'm sitting there looking at this guy, and this guy is absolutely glowing now. I'm seeing him, and nothing else, it's starting to obsess, and I'm an extrovert. I got to say something. (laughs) I look over at the guy, and I said, I heard myself say, because I didn't even know what I was going to say to him. God said, I want you to address this man right here in front of everybody. And I was like, oh, good, because I think the last time we did this, I told somebody the church was going to be closed or something. But anyway, so I'm, I'm over here, and, and I look at and I said, sir, you in the really nice suit. And everybody turns to look at him because they all knew who I was talking about. And he's just looking ahead. Didn't pay attention to me at all. I said, sir, God said I'm supposed to, uh, supposed to you're, you're a counselor. I'm supposed to call you counselor and... Uh, God put you in business, and he gave you training, and you're supposed to be help families, but you're not helping families. You're tearing them apart, and God said if you don't quit, he's going to take you off the planet. I heard myself say. <laughs> and then I had this release to go back to preaching. So I go back and preach up a storm going, oh, my God, I just told a guy, God's going to kill him. He's going to kill him. He's going to take him off the planet. I don't think it's going to be like Elijah. 
or Enoch that just was and then he was no more. I'm thinking of this horrible, gory death because I just spoke over this guy and I know somebody in the newspaper is going to pick up on it that I just said God was going to kill him. <clears throat> so I finished preaching. Of course, it's a fabulous sermon. You should get it. Um, yes. <laughs> so, I, so I finished preaching and uh, I go to call people to see if anybody needs healings and stuff. So we, we have a prayer time. So Angela and I up there, and, and I said, anybody that needs a touch from the Lord? And this woman walks up that I, you know, we never met anybody at the church because the pastor wasn't even there to greet us. He didn't even get there until after the thing started. And we were up leading worship, so it ain't like we talked to anybody. So this lady comes up, and I walked up to her, and, and Angela was there, and I said, Angela, lay hands on this woman right here. So she's laying hands. And I said, you got a death sentence this week. God said to address the spirit of fear a family curse, and to, to rebuke death off of you because you were told you're going to die this week. I heard myself say. <laughs> Turns out she's the secretary of the church. She'd just been diagnosed the, uh, two days prior with breast cancer. They were doing a radical mastectomy this coming Tuesday. Her mother died a year ago to the day of breast cancer, family curse. And I'm supposed to rebuke cancer off her and death, tell death to go somewhere else. Okay, so God puts this in my spirit. So I hear myself say, and I prophesy over this woman that God says you're going to live and not die. And we, we address this cancer right now in the name of Jesus and command it go. And she was instantly healed. And how do we know that? Because we stayed there for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks and months. And saw the church grow and grow and grow. Came in Tuesday, didn't have cancer. Still had everything God gave her to start with. No cancer, no surgery. <clears throat> we were at that church, and I'll go back to my story in a minute. We were at that church, and a little girl comes forward, wants prayer. And, you know, I'm, I'm Mr. Super Spiritual, so we're praying for everybody. And, you know, I want to be like Jesus. I want to lay hands on people. I want to feel the virtue go out of me. You know what I'm saying? I want to know that I know that they got healed. By faith, I lay hands on them because it says that, says that the prayer of faith will raise up the sick. Right? Right. Okay, so we're laying hands. This little girl comes up, and she's uh, in a brace and everything. She's got scoliosis of the spine. I'm praying headaches over here. Shut come my Sunday. Headache be gone. Sinuses in the name of Jesus. And there's this girl in a brace. I'll get back to her. Oh, over here I can pray for this, for this sore back. Oh, she's got a limp. Oh, I can pray for this. Oh, a marriage need healing. Oh, yes, Lord, we just lift that nasty husband up to you. Okay, here's a little girl over here. She's got braces on. And uh, I says, how can I pray for you? I'm hoping to God she's just got a headache. I'm just being real. She says, Jesus told me that if I came tonight that the man that spoke would pray for me and Jesus would heal me. Woo! That little girl had the spirit of prophecy. Because she's testifying about the things Christ has done and is doing for her. Hold on, I'm spilling water everywhere. I have a drinking problem, apparently. We can pray for that, too. Anyways, so this little girl, look, out, look, it's, well, Pastor Steve gets gold dust. I got water drops. <laughs> Hallelujah. Shakamande. Thank you, Father God. So... I said, okay, baby, I'll pray for you. I'm thinking, this is a big one for me. This is nothing for Jesus, right? Oh, I get my most spiritual, mm, chakamakura Sunday. I pray in the spirit over her. I rebuke this nasty uh, uh, spinal condition. I command every bone in her body to straighten up her entire skeleton to be the way God intended to be in the name of Jesus. And I don't feel nothing. And I mean, I don't feel nothing. I mean, like I was at McDonald's eating a hamburger and felt more revelatory. You know what I'm saying? I don't feel anything at all. And I'm praying for this little girl. And I'm like, okay, well. And I, I, Pastor Steve will beat me with a stick for this. Some are healed as they went. <laughs> I believe in instantaneous miracles. And I don't know why it didn't happen because I was fully ready for it. And I was ready to stay all night, but I had a release from praying. I was like, really? Because I want to see it. Okay. Go on and pray for other things. All right. I'll go back to this, this guy. 
So I told him God's taken him off the planet. So we get done praying for everybody, and this lady comes up after we're done praying, and the service is out and stuff, and, and they got a new golden corral in town, so everybody's going. And uh, so, I mean, come, really, you know what I'm saying, the, the buffet. And so this lady comes up, and she says, hey, um, my husband wants to talk to you. And I said, excuse me, where is he? Well, he's the guy that you spoke over with the nice suit. I said, where is he? She says, he's out in the parking lot. fixing to get my butt whipped in the parking lot because I shared the word of God. So I run over to the pastor. Pastor! Hi, my name is Jeff. How you doing? Because I never did officially meet him. And so um, I said, this, this, this guy wants me out in the park. He wants me in the parking lot. And he said, no, it's okay. It's fine. You go, go ahead. There's, there's no problem. I know him. I'm like, I hope you do. <clears throat> so we go out there and I said, can I help you? And I'm like, yeah, I know karate too. <laughs> well, okay, maybe I don't know karate, but I know crazy and I'm not afraid to use it. <laughs> but I tell the, I, I, can I help you? He said, yeah, I'm the one you, you spoke to. I'm like, duh. <laughs> so he says, I'm an attorney. A little light went off. Counselor. I went to school at Regent University and got my law degree because I told God I would stick up for family values and religious freedoms. And I did that until one of my best friend's wives literally ran off with a piano player from church, and I had to help him get a divorce. He didn't have any money. So I didn't charge him, and then another one came, and another one came, and pretty soon I was charged, and I'm the biggest divorce attorney in the entire Tidewater area which is Newport News, Norfolk, you know, Virginia Beach, the whole area, millions of people. He's the largest divorce attorney around, and God had told him, you need to quit. He said, I've gotten to the point to where I don't even ask if restoration is possible. I just tell him how much the fee is going to be. And I think of the message, and I look at him very boldly at this time because I know the word of God is true. And I said, sir, God said, if you don't quit, he's going to take your life. He said, I get it, and I quit. Would you like to go to lunch? We're all going to the Golden Corral. <laughs> I said, yeah. So we go to the Golden Corral, okay? <clears throat> and we're eating with the, 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 the pastor and his wife are there, and this guy and his wife are there, and there's another couple, uh, Richard and Sharon Sherrill, and uh, he's the head of the, the chaplain for the Virginia Beach Jail, and so I'm right at home. And that's a joke. And uh, so anyways, we're, we're about done eating the ninth course, and, and Richard Sher comes up and he says, hey, uh, uh, Pastor, you, you want to go to the salad bar with me? I'm like, what are we girls? We got to go to the bathroom together? <laughs> I'm just wondering. Dude, I've never had a guy invite me to the salad bar. I'm like, I, maybe, it's a, maybe it's, a, it's, a, it's a Virginia custom. I don't know. So he says, come on. And so, well, we didn't hold hands, but we walked pretty close. So we go to the salad bar. And he says, man, your ministry's really something. I said, isn't God good? Isn't he cool? He said, yeah. He said, hey, uh, you know what my wife does, right, Sharon? I said, no. What? He says, oh, yeah, she's the uh, features director for the 700 Club. I said, of course she is. <laughs> you betcha. <laughs> Let's go over here and discuss this with my wife. <laughs> hey, honey, you know what she does? <laughs> Guess what she does? What? Oh, I'm the features director for the 700 Club. My wife just looked at me and shook her head. <laughs> Do you think we could do your story? Do you think we could do a testimony? They ended up doing Angela's testimony. Her husband, her previous husband committed suicide. And the, well, the restoration of that God did in her life. And to this date, most powerful testimony 700 Club has ever had. The first six months, over 100,000 came to Christ. First time decisions for Christ because of the story that they did. Now, you're probably wondering why in the world I am saying this and why I'm telling you all of this stuff and these neat stories because these are great things that we've seen God do. I read in my Bible somewhere around the book of Acts. Yeah, I'll get there in just a second. 
She's helping me. I love you. <sighs> Where was I? I read somewhere in the book of Acts about the second chapter. He's quoting out of the book of Joel. And he says, in the last days, in those days, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And it says your young men will dream, or I mean, I mean, uh, uh, see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Your, yeah, see that right there? Your sons and daughters shall what? Whoo, come on. Now, I read in John, uh, John said, we're in the last days, right? We've been in the last days. in the dispensation of grace thing that's been poured out here. We're in those days that it was just saying there, and it says your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. Okay, so now that means when I pray for somebody, that means it's got to come to pass because God said it because he put it in my spirit. I bothered to listen to him, and I prayed. Or he put it in your spirit, and you listened, and you spoke it out of your mouth because the next night, because we're invited back because of the spirit of God moving, and we're up there doing our praise and worship thing, and I'm up there playing the piano, and we finish. It's tremendous worship. You're not in danger, Robert. Don't worry. And I begin to preach. I'm up there, and I'm beginning to share, and the back door of the place kicks open, and this little girl comes running in, sit down, and the place goes nuts. have no clue who this little girl is that just disrupted my preaching, but I'm going to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> Pastor says, you know who that is? I said, no. He said, that's the little girl that you prayed over last night that just got healed. He said, I couldn't tell you because her mom called on the way in, said they spent the whole day at the doctor, got x-rays done. She's totally healed. You see, when they went home... The mom was trying to figure out how to break the news to the little girl that Jesus still loved her even though she wasn't healed. And she says, no, that's okay, Mommy. This is the last night you're going to have to do this. And she was bathing her and putting her in bed and everything. This is the last night you're going to ever have to do this, Mommy, because, because Jesus is healing me tonight. <laughs> and... and, and the way the mom tells it, about 6 o'clock in the morning, she's awakened because a little girl is jumping on her bed. How does God speak to us? I want to share just a couple things because I... Listen, tonight, we're just, we're just going to get into it here, okay? Let's just take a few more minutes here. We're good on time anyways. I, got to, I don't even have a job. So, I mean, really, I don't have to get up tomorrow or anything. And it's, it's a holiday. So, <clears throat> sometimes, sometimes we get impressions. You ever have an impression on something? It's just you kind of have this thought go through your head. You just kind of know something. Okay? In fact, just like my mind is totally blank. It's your name right now. Yes. Melanie, God told me when I looked at you just now, you were getting ready to have a financial breakthrough that will blow your ever-loving mind. Okay? So, so, sometimes you just get an impression. Sometimes you just know something that you know something that you know something. Sometimes you see pictures. That's what I do. I was praying for a woman a while back, and the Lord gave a word that she had a problem in her abdomen. And, and so I had a woman come over, and I said, pray right there. Just put your hand right there and, and pray. And my daughter happened to be in that service, and she came and says, I don't know what you're praying for for that lady, but she had a blue ring of fire on her abdomen. You see, I saw, I saw the picture. I see, these, I see these things. So we see these pictures, and so we act on it. Brother Ronnie, can I embarrass you for a minute? Okay. <laughs> this is, he, he's, he's closer than a brother or an uncle or whatever. He's been, he and my dad, who's sitting behind him, have been friends since, what, eighth grade? That's like four years at least, right? Yeah. <laughs> and, and so we're, we're having ministry the other night in a, in a Bible study, and the Lord says he's got words for people that are that he wanted, wanted to prophesy over the people. And so I'm getting these pictures. And I look over at Ronnie, and I see a My Little Pony, a pink one with a purple mane. And it's got his face on it. 
And you see, Ronnie was Ronnie was born, and he had polio when he was when he was a, a young man. And one of his legs, he had to have surgery on to shorten it to equal the uh, the length and all this stuff. And so, um, but uh, I looked at him and I saw this My Little Pony, and and it has four Reebok tennis shoes on it. And it and and it, and it's got him. It's got his face, and he's dancing around, and he's strutting his stuff. And and I'm like, okay, My Little Pony. And so I begin, I said, Ronnie, I'm sorry. I'm not mean it. Look, I, I see a My Little Pony. You're, you're pink with a little purple mane, and it's your head. And, you, and all of a sudden, God says, I will make your feet as Heinz feet. I will restore you. You are a beast of burden. You think God has passed you by, but God says, I have a job for you, and you're going to go where the big horses can't go. So a picture, a picture, and then, and then God will fill in the blanks for it. Sometimes you hear the inner voice. Sometimes you, you, hear, you hear the voice. I always, I, would, I love to hear the audible voice of God. I think it would terrify me. I don't know that I've ever heard his voice, but I hear that inner voice. You know what I'm saying? You hear that inner voice, and, and, and all of a sudden it's leading, and it's, and it's, it's guiding you. It's, 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 it's leading. I, I, um, you know, brother, all night, I know this word has been spoken over you, but all night God is just saying that he's preparing you for ministry. And, and you, every time you stand up, I'm seeing you in front of people. And, and so I'm, I'm, hearing, I'm hearing this. I'm just telling you, man, God is opening the doors for you. You, you, you know that already. But... You, 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 you hear this, you hear this, you hear this voice, Clark, when you were standing up here a little while ago, uh, when you're worshiping over here, you're having a blast. And I know it's been spoken over you before you've been going, but God is, he's like quadrupling the places you're getting ready to go. He's, he's open, man. He's giving you all of, all of central and South America. It's yours. It's yours. And and, and, and there's, some, there's some places that are, that are uh, old Baltic states and stuff there, former Russian states and stuff that he's given you too. And I didn't, I didn't understand that. I'm just sitting there looking at the map, and it's just like it flooded and it changed colors, all of Central and South America. And then I see this smattering over there in Eastern Europe. They're yours, brother. They're yours. So <laughs> when, when we begin to hear his voice, we got to stop and, and listen to it because we might not have every word that was said to start with. You know what I mean? We might not have the whole picture yet, but we need, we need to bring that forth. We, ne we need to bring it forth. Man, I'm sitting there looking and y'all are flashing. <laughs> y'all are just, you know what I'm saying? You're, you're, wow, praise God. Okay, and sometimes we just, we will tie right into somebody's emotions or even their physical attributes or physical pains. You ever go to pray for somebody and you lay your hands on somebody and all of a sudden you got a toothache and it comes out of your mouth, you have a toothache and you heard yourself say, well, yeah, I have a tooth. I was supposed to go to the dentist tomorrow. Who is it that got the new tooth in here? Are they here tonight? They got the new tooth just in the last couple of weeks? Oh, well, praise the Lord. <laughs> See the other CD from Pastor Steve a couple of weeks ago to get that reference. No, but you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you'll, sometimes you'll have it. I've, I've gone to pray for people and stuff, and I'm, I'm preaching something, and I look over at somebody, and oh, gosh, I've got a headache. Oh, gosh, my back hurts right down here. Oh, man, whatever. And that's God speaking to me how to minister to that person. Yeah. Amen. Amen. God, God, God is, oh, wow, 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 wow. I'm just, I'm just listening. I'm just looking at y'all and just listening. Because what we're going to do in a few minutes is we're going to get into this prophetic. We're going to get into the spirit here in just, in just a moment. I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, um, share one final thought here. And then we'll have a little practical time, okay? If you remember the writing in 1 Corinthians in chapter 13, he says, I can do all these things, but without love. Right? Without love. It's nothing. I can, I can do this, speak in the tongue of men and angels, but have not love. It's what? It's nothing. It's like a clanging cymbal. 
You know what I'm saying? It says even, even an instrument being played, if you don't play some intelligible notes with it, you know, it, it doesn't sound, it doesn't do anything. We're not edified with it. Folks, the spirit of prophecy does not operate without love. I'm just, hey, look, God is love. Okay? I don't care how much you charge to show up in a church and prophesy. It ain't going to happen unless you're operating in love. That was a man, mean reference, wasn't it? No, listen, guys, we have got to have love as the absolute forefront in our hearts in order to see the gift of prophecy come forth. Now, I've talked about prophesying uh, to ourselves, right, self-prophecy. Uh, all of us should be doing that. All of us should be operating in prophesying or bringing that same word that we hear to the body. But here's where that love thing comes in. You might be able to take the hard word or harsh word from the Lord. But sometimes when it comes back out of our mouth and goes towards that person that God intended you to speak into their life, sometimes we don't temper it very well. We feel like we're pretty doggone cool because we've got a word from the Lord and we're going to give it to you if it kills you. You know what I'm saying? How about instead of God says you need to quit lying all the time? What if I thought about that word, that revelation that I had because in that's not what the Lord said. Okay. <laughs> but, you know, as an example, and, and instead, of, instead of, you know, if, 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 if I look at somebody and I get that impression and, and I hear, okay, that person has a problem telling the truth, okay, why don't I walk up to them and say, God is going to enable you to speak with truth and accuracy in a way you've never felt before. Amen. I just loved him with the word of God. I delivered the same message, but I don't have to beat the living daylights out of somebody. I mean, sometimes I heard myself say, he's going to take you off the planet. But you know what I'm saying? If, if, if we'll operate in love. See, love first is going to tell us what to do with the word that we just got anyways. There are so many of us that are full of zeal and we're all fired up and we just heard a word from God and so we expect that we're supposed to go give that to everybody. Right. Let's use a little love first. Amen. Let's stop for a minute and realize that the creator God, the one who loves us so much, just gave us that word. Let's find out what he wants done with that word. Amen. That is love in action. Because you're restraining yourself. You're restraining what your flesh wants to go do with this. Isn't it funny how our flesh acts when it gets a hold of the spiritual truth? Once it makes it from right here up to here, your brain pretty much thinks that it made this up. You know what I'm saying? It had an original thought. It might be a direct quote out of the word of God, and you just, that was fantastic. You know what I'm saying? We just... We, it's the truth. We, we, it, we get it. And, and yet, and yet, I guess I would say this. And, and yet, even the baptism of the Holy Spirit, if you've never experienced it, here's a, what I consider a, just a great description of it. <clears throat> it's inviting the spirit that dwells within you, that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, that same thing that's mentioned in the book of John about out of your belly will flow, will flow rivers of living water. Apparently, your spirit is some, right, resides somewhere in here. Okay? You can feel that burning in your bosom. Didn't our hearts burn within us while he walked with us, by the way? You know, you know what I'm saying? Okay, somewhere in here the Spirit is located. And when we get born again and we're sealed by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit resides in us here. And he speaks with us. And that's why, you know, he wants to bring these thoughts up of God. And he wants us to speak life and love and stuff. And so then when we go and say, well, what is this baptism all about? And what are these spiritual gifts all about? Where do they come from? I would describe it as inviting the Holy Spirit to move his residence from just in your spirit here up into your mind, your will, and your intellect. To bring it up into your soul. Because then every thought that you have can be made captive. Every thought has a Holy Ghost filter on it. Everything you say or do, your mouth has a Holy Ghost filter on it now because your mind, your will, your intellect, and your emotions are now the residing place of the Holy Spirit. 
That's a good, that's a good description right there. I like, I get that. I'm not a very bright guy. I get that though. I understand he can move from here to here. So now when I operate, I should have the filter turned on and the love filter ought to be in place that when I hear the word from the Lord, then I can say, Lord, what do you want me to do with it? Oh, you want me to give it to her right here? Okay, Lord. Sweetheart, listen, man, what I'm hearing is, is you've had some real pains. You've had some real hurt in your life and that there had been some unforgiveness there. It's been very, very difficult for you to forgive and go on and, and, and you, you felt just crushed. You've just felt really, really, really crushed and your self-image has been in an area where you, you didn't even like your self-image, okay? God says he said to tell you you're beautiful. You are a precious, precious handmaiden from the Lord. And that he's taking that pain. Hey, lay, lay hands on her. Just, just touch her right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we release these things to you right now in, the, in, in your name, O oh God. Father, I thank you for this beautiful and precious, precious handmaiden. Father, I thank you for the spirit of the living God that dwells in her. Oh, Father, I thank you for the mighty call on her life, O oh God. Lord, we just rejoice in that. And Father, I, I just speak against the spirit of depression that's been there. And I rebuke that depressive spirit. And I say you have to go and you can't come back in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And see... Sometimes we just, we, we just get, and folks, that's, that, that's the real deal. That's, that's the real deal. That's ministering to somebody's to mind, will, intellect, emotions, their, their body, what they're going through. But we've got to use love to do it. We've got, we've got to have that filter on in order, to, in order to do what God wants us to do. If we get a little zippy and a little zealous and we don't use that, then all of a sudden we're going to be speaking over somebody and we're going to just be tearing them a new head. Or, or, or something else. You know what I'm saying? We cannot, we cannot do this. So we have to say, okay, Lord, now that I've got this word, tell me what I'm supposed to do with it. Give me the interpretation and then the application. And I would say this is one of the final things before we do what we're going to do here, that in, in operating in the prophetic, we absolutely have to go to the Lord and ask for the application. Sometimes he just speaks to us to let us know something. Sometimes, maybe it's a relationship, maybe we know somebody, whatever. Sometimes the Lord will just give us insight <clears throat> so that we know how to love a person, how to meet them where they are. You know what I'm saying? Not to wash things over, whatever, but sometimes God will just give us that. He'll say, I want you to hold on to this for right now. We'll, we'll deal with that. The Lord will say, we'll, we'll, we'll deliver this at the appropriate time and place. Sometimes we'll have, we'll have words. You know, in, in the men's meetings, it's a great place because we can discuss things that we would never discuss sitting in here in mixed company. Guy issues. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes... We might get a word for one another right sitting in the middle of the group like this. And how distracting and stupid would that be if we just, you know what I'm saying? Hey, you, uh, back in the back row, you're dealing with, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's not how we need to do it. The Lord may let us know, but sometimes, sometimes he lets us know just to watch us shut our mouth. Some, some of the best things ever said were never said. Does that make sense? Some of the greatest things I've ever heard never came out of my mouth because the Lord said it. So in the black shirt with a groovy cross on, I like that necklace. That is so cool. Listen, man, I don't know what the employment thing, company, something. You've got a new company that God is going to dump in your lap. Okay, there's something, there's something you've been considering that's going gonna, gonna, to involve old friends that are going to introduce something to you or they already have, but there's something that's coming your way and uh, it's totally going to change your direction, totally change your life. God is bringing you some kingdom finances that you've been, a you've been asking him for those, by the way. And uh, so he just said to let you know that he hears your prayers and he's bringing them to you. Okay. Hallelujah. Um, yeah, praise God. Sometimes we just, we just get it when, when we see it, but we have to know how to deliver it. Now, what I want to do, it's, it's almost 9 o'clock. We're, we're okay. 
we'll, we'll, we'll break up in a second, but here's what I'd like you to do. Um, I want you to spend a minute. Y'all, y'all can get up out of your seats if you want and come up here. I want you to break up in groups of like six or eight or whatever, okay? And I just want you to, to, to hold hands and to pray. And I'm going to pray over us first, okay? And I'm going to just ask the Lord to impart this prophetic gift in a way that we understand it, in a way that we see pictures, we hear words, we hear statements, you know what I'm saying? We get impressions. If that's not already active in your life, I want you guys to pray with me if you, if you desire to operate in that area, okay? And then we're going to break up into groups of just like six or eight people and just for five or ten minutes, just pray in the Spirit, Pray in English if you want to. Pray in Spanish. I don't care. I dreamt, I dreamt last night that I showed up somewhere and could not speak anything but Spanish, and I don't speak Spanish, so I'm excited about that. <laughs> I, it, it, we, we were in India, in India and uh, Angela and we were, we were ministering in India a few years ago, and we needed to stop. Our train was not leaving, and there was literally a riot happening at the train station because we had all this luggage, and everybody was fighting about who could carry our luggage. Literally, a mob was breaking out in a fight over who could get the tips for carrying our luggage. And so we went to a hotel, and there's I don't know, about 10 of us or so that packed in this little hotel room just for five or six hours in the middle of the night there because uh, the train, it was midnight, and the train wouldn't leave until 6 in the morning. And uh, so just to get away from the danger, we went to the hotel. And uh, so we had this conversation for about 90 minutes about the condition of our ministry, uh, one of the things going on in the pastor's training center in, in India and the need to buy new property because a Muslim now owned the property that we were renting and, and so he didn't like the fact that we were Christians in there and everything. We had about a 90-minute conversation and then we all stopped and, and everybody said, well, let's get a drink of water and get ready to head back to the, uh, to the station there. And one of the guys walked up and he says, hey, I didn't know you spoke Hindi. I don't. He says, Angela's over sitting there. She says, you know darn well you've been speaking another language for 90 minutes. So I'm just believing for these things. I, because now we can speak Hindi. It's happened in some other languages and stuff. And, and see, that's part of the prophetic gift too. Because he's giving the interpretation while we're speaking in these tongues. That's prophecy. Tongues interpretation is prophecy. Okay. Well, praise the Lord, guys. I'll tell you what, it is exciting. I believe with all of my heart, I know we got kind of kind of down to business here in the last few minutes here, but I hope that we're learning something. I'm hoping that what we're getting here is God's desire for us to operate in a realm of prophetic that maybe we've never operated in before. He wants you to hear his voice clearly. He wants me to hear his voice clearly. He absolutely, positively communicates with us every day. We just need to turn those receptors on. Then once we start start hearing him, seeing the picture, seeing whatever it is, how he's got to speak to us. Isn't it funny? He's got to put these little plastic cars and trucks in front of us sometimes. I feel so simple. But he wants to speak to us like this so that we'll take the thought captive. A great preacher stands in this pulpit all the time here and quotes out of Deuteronomy and says that those things of God, right? But once they're revealed... They belong to us, right? I quote that guy all day long because he he quotes the word of God. God wants to put something inside of us, flip a switch, however you want to say it, to where we hear him more clearly. Because not only will we get ministered to and, and it'll help us to grow, but he wants us to be able to speak into the lives of those that are around us so that healing will come, so that direction will come. I'm going to pray in just a minute, but my last thing I'll say is if you get a prophetic word from someone, or even if the Lord speaks to you, and and say I walk up to Miss Sally and I say, Sally, here's what I hear the Lord saying to you. Always. Did I mention always? I'll say always. Always. Go back and compare that to the written word of God. And it's my personal belief that when I speak something over somebody that I heard from the Lord, that God has already or will very shortly speak the same thing to them. 
I typically don't hear something so off the wall and bring it to somebody that God has not already spoken to. It may seem off the wall to me, but God's already preparing their hearts and he's already talking to them. So if you get a word spoken over you by me, I don't give anybody else. Take it and hold it up to this filter right here. Because the word says in Second Chronicles 20, 20. Is it 20? Second Chronicles? First. Second, I think Second Chronicles 20, 20. You don't have to look it up. What does it say there? Does anybody know? Because my mind totally went blank as soon as I decided to say where that scripture is. Let's see here. Yes, there you go. Man, what, did I just rip that out there? And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. As they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Believe his prophets, and you shall prosper. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lamb of God. Give the Lord praise. <clears throat> if you would like... Y'all are welcome to come on up this way here. I'd love to, I, I'm going to pray over the group, those that want to receive uh, an anointing for the prophetic and to be able to hear God. We're just going to make a declaration. It isn't like I've got a secret sauce or anything like that I can give you, but I can certainly pray over you. And as we seek the Lord with all of our heart, and, and it says to seek earnestly the spiritual gifts, right? But above all that ye may prophesy. Why? Because the church, the body is edified through the gift of prophecy. So for those of you, if, you, if you'd like to have that, if you'd like to raise to, to, your, to your feet there, um, those that, that uh, want to be involved in that prayer, you guys are welcome to pray with me. Um, I'll, I'll lead you in prayer. And then I'd like to just take a couple minutes, grab six people around you, and let's just pray for a minute. And Robert, if you could, you, could, you could play, we'll just let the anointing go because I believe that even right now, as soon as we're done praying and we'll get together here for just a couple minutes, I believe that we will see the spirit of prophecy begin to, to be activated in our lives. And, and you're going to hear things and you're going to see things in these little groups. And this is, this is what I would call a, 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 a prophetic activation, okay? As we get, and we activate the, the spirit of prophecy when it is, you're going to be amazed at what's going to happen in these small groups just, just like this, okay? All right. Let's just worship the Lord in, in the spirit for just a moment.